I did uh, the television reporting of the, of the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 96 to 98. Um, I moved with the Truth Commission wherever they went. I attended most sessions. It struck me how many of the perpetrators of great gross human rights violations, how many of the men who came to ask for amnesty for murder, torture, kidnap, looked like me, were my age, some of them had my name, and most came from similar circumstances. That could have been me, which helped me an awful lot to understand them a bit better and to stop despising them. But it also reminded me that a, I had the, the blessing of being a journalist, so I saw a different reality. B, but I think I made choices. Because that, I think, is always important. You're not just a victim of what happened to you. You come at crucial points in your life to decide where you decide, am I going to go the way that would be materially beneficial? Or do I go the way that my conscience that I can live with my conscience. Now, what I can tell you, I didn't tell, I didn't choose the side that made me materially well off, as my bank manager would attest. Um, that that was the pattern. Um, I was so frustrated with uh, what was going on back home that I knew I had to leave Afrikaans journalism. It was very hard, and I think people will find this very difficult to understand. Um, why would I, uh, being very critical of the apartheid system, being very critical of the true nature of Africana nationalism, and beginning to realize the, uh, the real nature of the apartheid system, why would I continue to work, or why would I go and work for an Afrikaans newspaper in the first place? Well, I must tell you, when I finished university, there was no choice to go and work for an English language publication because they were more critical of the apartheid government was absolutely unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable. I am an Afrikaner. Why would I go and work for the English? Um, and people forget that that was the mentality in the, in, the, uh, in the last 30, well, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. I, I never even consider it. So now I got to the point that I should consider it, that I had to consider it. I had to find another way of being a journalist but living with my conscience. It was so hard for me to do it that I decided, well, maybe I should leave the country. So I went to live in Northern Ireland where Bobby Sands was starving himself to death at that point. And I thought, yeah, nice. Uh, a nice war conflict somewhere else would be good for me. Then I thought, well, maybe I should be a communist. Maybe that, that's a good idea. So I went to live in East Berlin in 83. And fortunately, the life in the Democratic Republic of Germany cured me of communism for the rest of my life. Um, and then I came back and I started working for the Sunday Times and for Business Day. Only to realize that it's the same agenda, they're just using more polite words. The Financial Mail and Sunday Times at the time represented the interests of big business, corporate interests in South Africa, mostly mostly white at that stage, mostly English-speaking, the Anglo-Americans. Financial Mail sometimes were owned by Anglo-American at the time. And the new code that I also didn't get, I somehow never understood these subtle things, was we write negatively about apartheid. We make nasty comments about the, the National Party apartheid politicians. But we don't want to change the system because it's good for business. And I didn't get that note. I didn't understand that. I was trying to live my conscience through my journalism. And 
So, yeah, it's slightly f more free and respectable in my journalism, but the ceiling had just lifted a little bit. It was the same thing. Um, so I ended up being very frustrated once again and clashed uh, with my editors uh, on the stuff that I was writing.